Hey, I just want to begin by, uh, you know, um, giving our condolences and thoughts and prayers with Coach Knight's family uh, during this difficult time of, of loss. And I uh, just want to just reflect and say, you know, being born and raised in this state and um, being an Indiana basketball you know, fan when I was a kid, and, uh, just everything he meant to our university and being one of the greatest, you know, coaches in the history of our country, you know, in any sport. And so just I uh, want to uh, just acknowledge him and, and appreciate uh, his family at this time and be able to, um, you know, remember him in, a, in highest regards. Questions? Nathan Todd. Hey, Coach, how's it going? I'm good, buddy. How are you? I'm okay. I wanted to ask you about um, Josh Henderson. Obviously, he came back uh, this past week, played for you guys. Um, I know he's been a big part of the offense the last couple of years. Just how big was it to get him back? What did you see from him? And, you know, I mean, how much of a boost could he give you a running game, if not just as a runner, but as a receiver over these last four weeks? Yeah, he's very important to us. Um, and you saw that. I know he worked really, really hard to come back and, and um, really – Encouraged to see him do what he did this past weekend, and you know, not surprised. He's such a solid guy in, in, in every phase of catching the ball, pass protection, running, obviously. Uh, so, just gives us a great presence out there, and a lot of good, strong leadership in that room and on our and that side of the football. So, great to have him back. Going to need him, you know, in each of these last four regular season games, and uh, uh, expect him to, to continue to just get healthier each week and get back to to who he is, which we know he's a great, great player for us. Uh, hey, Tom, uh, I know you spoke on Monday about the uh, Michigan sign stealing situation. I wanted to ask you about kind of espionage in football generally. I mean, how much time do you have to devote to dealing with it? How prevalent is it? Maybe how naive are we to how prevalent it might be? Uh, kind of give me an idea of how that how that uh, kind of plays out at, at, at this level. Well, I would say, you know, on game day, uh, there's a high level of effort that goes into um, being able to efficiently, you know, sign to your, you know, respective areas on offense and defense to be able to, <clears throat> you know, as you see, we do, we go to great lengths with trying to protect that as best as possible. That's, that's kind of the gamesmanship of football. So that's part of it in college. You know, you're trying to figure out what they're doing and, and uh, um, a lot of effort goes into that, trying to, you know, change the signals up you know, have dummy signalers. Um, and you can see on game day all the different mechanisms that people use to try to confuse. You know, people use wristbands. They sometimes will huddle so guys can't figure out what they're doing. You know, so that would be kind of the, the game day go back and forth. Everybody kind of does that. We talk to other teams, hey, what's this, what's that? You know, whether it's signals for personnel or the actual calls themselves. And so that's just kind of part of it, you know. So, um, but then there's another angle of this or another you know, component of of doing things that are illegal, of whether it's, you know, you cannot scout a team in person. That's illegal for college football. You can't video them. You know, you can't video the signalers, you know. Um, so th those are things that are uh, crossing the line, you know. And so that's not a part of football. That's not a, a part that's accepted in football. And so that's just, um, you know, there are two different things in my opinion. But the game day part of it is is – it's extensive. There's no doubt, and there's a lot that goes into it. And guys trying to, you know, because obviously if you know what another team's running or doing, it's a very strong advantage. Mike, Mike and Jim. Yeah, so I'm uh, referencing kind of your opening statement about Coach Knight. Had you ever met him, and uh, what were your kind of earliest memories, I guess, of, of his teams? And um, what did you – I know you're very different stylistically as he was than he was, but what did you appreciate about him as a, as a coach? You know, you know, interestingly or sadly, I would say I, I never met him, you know, and uh, um, I wish I had, but I had not and not had, did not have that opportunity. And so um, but from a, you know, earliest memories, you know, just the intensity, the passion, you know, um, I shared last night, you know, my first time ever seeing him when I was uh a boy at Newcastle when he was recruiting Steve Alford, uh, he came to one of our one of his games, and so I got to see him there. Um, I was just I didn't realize how big a man he was until then, and and just such an imposing presence. But but this to me the 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 motivation, the toughness, the defensive emphasis. You know, guys. You know, I guess the way I perceived it was, man, guys went to class. They graduated. They did things the right way, on and off the field. He didn't tolerate that, and and uh, just. Uh, 
the, the consistent, you know, performance of his teams of just being tough, gritty, uh, competitive. And so just, you know, that's the part I loved. You know, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know, never seen him coach in person as far as like at a practice or anything like that, uh, just in some games that I've seen in person, obviously. Everything else was all from a distance, you know, but, but just uh, – you know, any any time a person has that level of success in any sport, you know it's uh, um, it's, it's hard to do without a question, especially for a long period of time. You know, so but I just think just the the toughness and uh, you know, obviously just the the way his teams executed and then just trying to to get the most out of your players, you know, get them to play to the highest potential that they've been given. So those are the things that kind of stick out to me about him. We, we are going to wear helmet decals on Saturday in in honor of him with his initials on on our, on our helmets. Did the whole town show up for that recruiting visit when he came? Well, the whole town showed up for pretty much every basketball game in Newcastle. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when you got a, a town that's about 20,000 people and the, and the, uh, the high school gym seats 10,000 people, uh, and it was – I know for Steve's senior year, every game was packed. You know, I was every one of them. And so, um, yeah, really some distinct memories of, of that. And, and uh, yeah, there's no question he was highly regarded in Newcastle and, and still is to this day. Jimmy Jim, Jack. Tom, how are you? I'm doing great, buddy. How are you? Good, sir. Thank you for asking. Uh, Wisconsin this weekend, uh, probably, I don't want to say the toughest game left on the schedule because they're, they're all tough, but from the statistical standpoint and all that, Wisconsin is the, the toughest game left on the schedule. Needing to win all of them to become bowl eligible, which is still uh, out there for you guys. What do you have to do differently this week that has not been done uh, last week? Uh, yeah. There was the moment when the decision, decision was made to go for a field goal instead of going for it. Is it now a time to where when those moments come again, you kind of have to push yourself to go for, for things you normally wouldn't? Well, you know, I would say this. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt. You just talk about being aggressive. Yeah, we got to be aggressive. Uh, there's going to be some calculated risks that need to be taken uh, as you move forward into situations like this. You know, I, I think that uh, you look at that game last week, you say, what, can we, what do you need to do different? Well, we need to eliminate some of those self-inflicted mistakes. We got to catch all the punts. We got to be great on special teams. You know, we got to uh, not have, we call them cats, you know, crimes against the team, you know, jumping off sides on offense. Or we had an, an, an uh, illegal procedure penalty by, our punt team that cannot happen you know those are things that we uh, that hurt us and hurt our team you know and so and then just executing in critical situations you know and then I, I think you're right you know being more aggressive without question you know but I think you know in that situation you know what I have still kicked a field goal yes you know what you maybe called it lead up to that field goal yeah that's where you want to be more aggressive but but as far as the field goal itself you got in a situation where there's three minutes to go in the game and you got a chance to tie the game you know I think that's you know that's, you need to do that. Now, if there's less than that, you're not going to have no chance of getting the ball back. You know, our defense was playing really good at the time. You expect to get a stop, get the ball back, and go win the game or have a chance to beat them in overtime. But at the same time, those are f variables that play into it. But, yeah, I think you're right. You know, it's, uh, you know, everything, the game, nothing to lose. You got to go. You got to play. You got to be aggressive. You got to you gotta let it rip. We got to coach that way. We got to play that way. And I want to see our guys do that, you know. So, But there's no doubt that the intensity is elevated. There's urgency uh, each week, as there always is. But I think it, it definitely gets heightened when it's, uh, you know, you know what's at stake. Jeff, Jeff and Kevin. Hey, Tom. Uh, when we talked to Brendan Sorsby on, on Monday, um, he mentioned that kind of to a certain degree he likes taking hits or he likes delivering hits in the run game. It kind of fires him up, I guess. Have you um, had any conversations with him about that in terms of trying to find a balance of, like, highlighting that aspect of his game because it is one of his better traits but also trying to stay safe with that? Without question. You know, we, we just talked about, you know, picking and choosing when those – because he said the same thing to us. You know, Coach Hal loved it. Gets me fired up. You know, I love to run guys over. Like, well, you know, we got to be we got to be smart. You're not you're not a linebacker. You, know, you do have to throw the football, you know. So uh, – but I love that mindset. I love that toughness. I love that it kind of attracted us to him when we recruited him. Saw that on film. And so – but you got to pick and choose. You know, you got to know, okay, if it's – we got to get a first down, it's third down or it's fourth down, then, yeah, you got it's time to 
to lower your shoulder and go make a play. But if if that's not the case, you got to be able to eliminate some of those unnecessary hits. You know that uh, that that will happen, and you're obviously playing against you know elite level defensive players that have one objective, and that is to affect the quarterback. And uh, so we, they know those hits add up as well. So we just got to be smart. We've obviously talked to him through that. We'll continue to do that. He is still young, and uh, but you love that that edge about him. You love that that swagger and that ability to want to do and play that way. We just got to be smart. Hey, Coach. Going back to Michigan, late last night there was a report that said that the vast majority of Big Ten coaches got on their call yesterday with Commissioner Petiti expressing their ongoing frustrations with the sign stealing investigation and coaches urging action against the program. I was wondering, were you involved in that call? And if so, what role did you have in those conversations? Well, you know, we had a Big Ten call that is accurate, and uh, that was, you know, private information that was shared, you know, with our commissioner from our coaches, and and uh, yeah, people got on there, we got on there, and voiced our opinions, and and uh, <clears throat> basically, you know, make sure we share with him what we thought. So that will obviously be moving forward, and we'll we'll see what uh, the Big Ten chooses to do. Right, Seth, last one. Tom, you talked before about the way you're approaching the game now, kind of needing to win out to make a bowl game and needing to take more calculated risks. Do you sense your players kind of feeling that urgency as well at all? And does, does that situation, you know, needing to win out, does that kind of change anything about the way they're approaching this game? Well, I just think that, uh, you know, as we talked as a team, you know, when you, you're you in a playoff mindset of, of, you know, you understand what's at stake, there's an urgency and intensity that gets elevated, whether it's, you know, NFL playoffs or, you know, you talk about the college playoff or, you know, um, high school playoffs, you know, when you're playing in that kind of, of uh, situation, you know, kids have all been through that in high school you know and so bottom line is is that um any any time you're in in this moment of understanding what's at stake you know yeah it increases the intensity increases that and, and it should you know and so but at the same time you got to be very locked into this is one game one focus you know just like you did you know i've been part of you know several um you know state championship playoff runs in high school or, you know, uh, opportunities where you know you gotta you have to win a football game to be able to continue doing what you want to do and be where you want to be. So bottom line is is that uh, there's some maturity to that. You have to understand, you know, that it's still one and oh mindset. All the energy, all the focus is just on this one game and nothing beyond that. You know, that's what we can control is what we do today and in this moment. So, but you want our guys to play free and aggressive and physical and, and just, uh, you know, play with confidence. But, but uh, you know, you're not playing to, 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 to not make a mistake. You're playing to, to make a play and be your best, you know. So you just want them to be able to be aggressive. And, and it's just, yeah, I think that they they understand the, the urgency, this what we're at, the situation we're in, and the way our schedule played itself out and, and how we have to t- attack them. Each, you know, one at a time here at the end. So, I uh, love the guys' approach this week. Obviously, we're playing a very, very good football team. And uh, yeah, every team in this conference has a lot of really good players on it. And it's going to be a very, very challenging battle. So, uh, we got a lot of respect for them. And we know we're going to play our best football of the season on Saturday. And we expect us to do that. All right, thanks, All right, thanks Tom. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Elio.